Bulwark Falconeer Chronicles. Another wonderful name in the naming world. I love the I love I love the name Bulwark. I don't. I mean, I the, it needs the Falconeer Chronicles because it's part of the another game that this is what it's based off of. Is what I've been told. The name is the name is great, and it's not hard to pronounce. And I can remember. I remembered it. I didn't write it down, so that's big. This game I played uh, a couple of months ago on a demo. According to Steam, I played four minutes and then I bounced out. Four minutes doesn't seem like enough to give this game a chance. And I was happy when I received an email saying, hey, listen, give this game another chance. And I thought to myself, you know what? Let's try to play it. And I think the, the key to remember here is do not get frustrated. There is a great game here. It's just got a learning curve. And the learning curve is its controls. Let's get into it. Uh, let's say start. I think that it is. A word of advice. Click and build everywhere. There are no mistakes and slowly figuring out what builds where and how things grow is part of the game. It's about experimenting. So don't be afraid and just go wild. That's the developer there. I love these little... I love the little uh, NPCs. I love the voiceover work. I think it's really good. The graphics are uh, inc incredibly solid. Um, and I think that what he says there is one of the things you need to really think about and take away, which is you do not lose anything by destroying stuff. You cannot make a mistake. And I, I think like it's hard for us city builder folks and colony sim management people to think, well, when we build it, we're going to lose some resources or we're going to lose some time. And I think that's one of the things that really makes this game stand out. And so let's just take the next 20 minutes or so and run through the beginning and show you sort of how it works and talk about the controls. Uh, let's get into it. We're going to say begin. Our people were wrecked during the War of the Trees. I'm going to let you watch this on your own the next time. Let's skip past it. All right, here we are. Preparing. Coming up. Flying. Developing. Exploring. And so it's it's a city builder, but I would also say ah, that it's like a... Hold here. on. We've already built a few essential buildings. I'll assist you in connecting things up and getting the settlement up and running. That's our advisor. And while and you're on the ground, he does we'll this. focus on a single building at a time. This will allow you to build outward in a variety of ways and upwards later on. My joke is that he always is talking when I'm about to start talking. I was streaming this game not too many, uh, not too long ago. And every time I'm talking, he's like, oh, hey, and by the way. And then I'm like, okay, cool. He's done talking. And then he's like, hey, but by the way, I'm like, stop talking over the me. Blah. Um, all right. So hold middle mouse button. So a couple things to think about. You can hit escape here. You can go to settings and you can look at some quick settings here. This is where you're going to change like your uh, shadow and frame rate and all that fun stuff. All right. And you got to remember to hit save and close. And then controls, and this is the important one. You can change the control scheme here. You can change the sensitivity. You can change how it rotates. You can change all of this. If you've got a controller, you can play with the controller. That's important. Here's here's where you can rebind stuff if you want to. And I think these base these building command icons and these resource icons are really important. And I think they should be like, I think it should just be a big banner at the beginning because it kind of tells you, hey, this is what a harbor is. This is what a tower is going to look like. This is buildings not possible, foundations and their sizes, and then an upgrade. And then these are the current resources. And this will, if, if you stare at this right now, and then when we get into the game, this will make a whole heck of a lot more sense. And I didn't look at this the first time through. So I highly recommend just kind of giving this a, just kind of putting it in that memory of yours so you can use it. So when you get to this next part, and he explains it, but like it didn't make any sense. And when I looked at this, I was like, wait, what? An amazing photo mode, by the way, if you want to take pictures in the game. Really, really cool. All right, so let's hit continue. All right, here we are. Connect this outpost to the woodmill, which is located down in the shallow water beside the sea tree fungi. Without wood, we cannot build. Without wood, we can't build. That's how you know you're playing a city builder or, uh, uh, or any kind of colony sim, right? You got to have wood. Wood's the starter for everything. Uh, all right, so the hardest part about this game, I think, is just realizing that you are connected to this building. Do you see my little icon here? I can move around it. It's not like a free form. I am tethered to this thing, and I am. it's not going anywhere, right? 
And so my first connection will be to come down here. You can see it's lit up. And then I'm going to build. Notice how workers are already building houses and industry along the walkway. Wherever you build and our workers can reach, they will settle. All right, and what, now focus on the wood mills. And what he's saying now is that, like, we can see all these little buildings that built off the side right in here. Those were built by the computer, and those are people moving in. So we're having workers come come in, right? And so, it, and let's just say this didn't work out the way we thought it would. We can come in here and hold V, and we can take it out. No loss. No problem. And we can build it right back. All right, now it's saying move the cursor to the nearby wood mill, which we're going to do. This is your wood mill. It produces and transports wood across walkways. Let us build a basic wooden tower with a walkway towards it. All right, now he's saying build a tower. All right, and so if we if we move away, you can see these little circles are coming up. And that means at the very end, it's going to put a tower. And we can go any direction we want here. And if we go out this way, you can see it's turning red, so we can't go any further. Ooh, there's a little bit of lightning. I'm going to build it right... Hmm... I'm going to build it right... Oh, you can see it builds right over the top there. I'm going to build here. And you just built a basic tower. It is used to connect up your settlement and transport vital resources. Workers will also build homes and industry around it. Cool. You cannot build on top of the sea tree fungi. I cannot build on top of the sea tree. To produce wood. We need to keep focusing our attention on the wood mill. <laughs> All right. So you can see that I've connected them pretty easily. And the city just starts growing around it, right? And you can just keep branching off and branching off. We can click. And you can see, ooh, there's trees growing. We can do another one here. And what this is doing is it's making more uh, tree miners, which is producing more wood. And if we wanted to upgrade one of these, you can see how it's gold. See how it's gold? And we hold it. There is no stone available for this upgrade. Oh, no stone available. All right. We're going to go back to the wood mill. Wood can only travel a limited number of walkways away from the wood mill. But this can be increased by encouraging workers to build along walkways connected to the wood mill. All right. So that's key. Thanks, Altman. The more walkways that are connected, the more wood that'll be done. So we do another one here. Good work. Yep. The wood mill is now delivering wood further than before, so we can move on. Across from the wood mill, we also built a stone quarry. Let's connect that to our settlement. All right, we're going to connect this to here. All right, now it's connected. And now we're going to find a stone building. And we're going to upgrade a basic wooden tower, which is this guy. You can see him here. See the little guy? And we're going to say upgrade. Stone towers create stone walkways. If you rebuild a walkway adjacent to a stone tower in place of a current wooden one, it will be upgraded to stone. All right, and to build a stone walkway, we just connect here with a little thing, and then we hit upgrade, and it's stone. Easy. <laughs> All right. Now it wants us to select the outpost, so we're going to come up here. Outposts can be upgraded as well. Let's use the stone to upgrade the outpost to its second stage. All right, and we're going to do that. We can add foundations to basic towers and outposts. These allow workers to build a higher class of housing on them increasing the work output. And if we remember that little thing I showed you at the beginning, this little squares mean that these, see it saying extend the build slowly, the square icons that build foundations, so we can build the some foundations. The of our outpost can be improved further by connecting more towers and walkways to it. So you can see we can kind of just cheat it around. There's people building down there. Do you see it? We can't because of where we're located on here, we can't get too we can't get too many. We can get maybe another one there. There we go. 
build more connections to the towers and walkways. So let's build, let's build one right in here. All towers allow for foundations, wood, stone, and later command towers. And later command, command towers. towers also allow for battlements. And I'm just going to keep building along here and I'm going to bring it Develop a command tower, explore the open world. It's a really good tutorial. Don't skip well. it. Definitely it follow time it. time we started being more ambitious. Take to the skies and seek out iron ore. So you can see that... You can see that I've connected kind of everything together. And if you didn't like... I think the key here is like if you didn't like what it was, you can just hold V. And it pulls it out. And you're like, you know what? I don't want it to go there. I'd like it to be here and then to come in. And then remember to like upgrade to stone. We can just do it again. Uh, and then we can come here and we can take this one and we can upgrade it. And then we can upgrade. There's no iron available. There's no iron available, right? We have done well. It is time we started being more ambitious. And then we can do some Take to the cool. skies. Uh, he's like, he's like, iron you iron. have spent too much time goofing around, Rax. You got to get out there. <laughs> so you can do some really fun things. All right. So now it's telling us we need to get to the sky. So we're going to hit spacebar. Your surveyor allows you to build resource extractors, harbors, and outposts on other islands. It will also help to get you out of trouble, which is never far on the Earth sea. And you can see this is just a point and click, a nice cool dir dirigible. We're going to hit the M map button to bring up the world map. The world map shows our holdings, which we can fast travel to. I will also mark any freelance captains that enter our waters, as well as suspicious locations. All right, it wants us to do iron. So we've got two iron nodes, one here and one here. I'm going to go to this one here, and then we're going to click M to get back. You can't escape out of the map. You got to hit M. It's uh, escape isn't like the get out of every map key, which I've gotten used to, but the first couple times drove me crazy. Mine on this spot. Workers will mine for ore, and the metallurgical industry will be built up around it. Mine will allow our most advanced towers. Uh, most advanced towers and buildings. All right, so we're gonna build a mine here. We now have access to iron, but it needs to be transported across the water. Let us build a trade route for ships that can transport iron and other resources back and forth. If you see when we hover here, we've got it's gold and then it's black. If we click here, it's going to, it'll connect a, uh, a seaport. Several captains are now available. Each captain holds specific resources. For this trade route, iron is required, but wood is also recommended to expand the mine later. I think that this is one of the problems with the game in terms of like ease of use. Uh, I, I like this idea. So here are the captains and you can tell what they do. Stone and he, tell, he tells you to. So we're going to pick this guy because he does wood and people. And we'll say assign. And now we need to build another harbor at the other base. And if we click out of here. We can then then we have to go uh map. The world map shows our holdings, which we can fast track. Thank you. Thank you, friend. And now we want to reconnect it with our other base. And so we can click here and we can say travel fast, which makes it great. And then we're here, but just like I wish it was just like I wish I wish that that part of it was much more fluid, like opens back up, the, like you create the harbor, opens the map or connects it to another way. I just wish it's like, a, it's just seems like a lot of steps. And, it, and also like if you, if you're doing it for the very first time, you're like, okay, so I built the harbor. It's like, now you need to connect it somewhere. You're like, but where, right? So I think it's kind of a little dead endy. So you're just going to come back to wherever you want. And it's either at your main base or if you have other bases that you build. And so we'll build another harbor here. And then this will connect to our base. You'll see. See, it builds a little walkway. Hell of a walkway. This trade route is now connected. The captain can transport their specific goods back and forth. 
and now it's just running. And if we hit space, we can, we can, we can talk to it. This is an even funnier one. Now it's moved me to where it started. So I was at my base and now I'm here. Didn't necessarily want to be here. You know, it should just come up to like a trade window and be like, here's what's happening. Because now I'm all the way over here and I'm like, ah, oh, shit, I didn't want to be all the way over here. So it's like a couple of steps to get back to where I am, which is just, it, it you, especially in the very beginning, and, I'm, and I cannot stress this enough, and I'll say it again and again, you will fight the controls of this game. Just stop fighting and accept that that is just part of the experience. It, there is a good game here. It's just mired in bad controls, but just not bad controls, just interesting choices. I just, if I had my way, it would be a lot more free form because the, because the premise is so good and it, and it definitely looks like to me from the time I've spent with it to be a rich game. So now what's happening is we're bringing workers and wood to this area, which means we can expand on this area. If we come just like on the other place, we could say, Hey, let's build out. Let's build whoops, Drax. Come on. Let's build something like out here. Uh, and then we can build uh, a little, oh, little platforms. <laughs> And we can do the same if we come, if we come back, we can come off, I think we can do, we can come off the backside here, right? And then we can actually do a little fun little jets out there, which look good. And then those people will start building little houses and those are supplying not only workers for here, but workers that will go back and forth. And we can continue to do this as long as we'll let us. Now on the demo, you can see in the top corner there, I've got a limit of 50. So I kind of need to be somewhat put together, but like we're just having fun here, right? We have reached a milestone in population. And you can see the population just keeps growing, right? Houses. This will attract new free house captains and commanders to our banner. The free house folk are numerous. And will generally so the building is freeform, but it's just, it's just so much different than any other game you've played before. And I think that for, for a lot of people that are veteran city builders like me, it's just, it's such a change that it takes our, it take, it took my brain a long time to just be like, yeah, okay, great. What am I thinking? This is amazing. Okay. All right, hold on. Um, oh, we skipped it. He's going to tell us to pay attention. Select your outposts. So now we need to go back to the very beginning here. Before the Great War, the Imperium held the resources and the Mansa controlled the technology. Now yeah, he's like, he's talking politics. I'll let you deal with that when you play the game. We're going to travel there. And then M to get out of the map. Here we are back at the beginning. Now we can, now I think we can click here. And you can see I'm even still kind of battling with it, right? Um, select your outpost. I've selected it. There is no iron available for this upgrade. There's no iron available. Wait, did I not have iron moved? Yeah, I did. Oh, I had people. I didn't have iron moved. A new home. Seeing it prosper fills me with pride. I needed to have iron moved. I will cut it. I will A new home. We needed this guy. We learned an important lesson. All right, so iron also needs to move. So we hit assign captain. And so this is, this is actually really good because you have up to three different people that you can assign. And then when we get like people that have like attack boats, we can put an attack boat here and that'll like keep the, the trade route safe. We're not going to make it to that today, but it's really cool. All right. And then we'll bow out of that. And now he's going to say, you need to go back uh, uh, to your main base and do what I was trying to do. <laughs> Drags, come on. Always ahead of himself. Select your outpost. Yep. So we can start expanding it further. With iron, we can start building defensive structures such as imposing command towers. But before doing so, we need to upgrade our outpost to, to a our proper, proper citadel. citadel. We have reached Ooh. a milestone in population, aligning with the free houses. This will attract new free house captains. And a, lot of, a lot of politics. A lot of politics. We're just here talking about the 
Developing a command tower. All right. We can do this. We can Your do this. Major resources now at our disposal. Let's focus on building command towers. All right. These can be built with multiple floors as well as additional foundations and a balcony. You see, I'm struggling. All right, we're going to upgrade this tower right here, which is this one right in front of us where my little guy is. And all I'm doing is right clicking to just add another level. Mighty command towers have the potential to reach high into the sky. Their height can be increased by adding more foundations as well as having better access to wood. Build this tower as high as possible. As high as possible. And now you can see we've got like some triangle ones, which are doing fun things, right? This command tower is looking stout. This Your command tower is looking stout. Commander among our retinue. Let's assign them to this command tower. All right. Now we can assign a commander. Which it's that dude. We've done it. This tower and its commander now stand watch over our settlement. Their forces will deploy, joining our battle group when the surveyor is near the command tower. So it's just our like a settlement is it's a protective tower. We have access to resources, a citadel, and command towers. It's time to explore the surrounding area, finding more people that will help us thrive. Excellent. These are desperate times. Thank you. Thank you. All, up to you. all right. Head out and explore That's the beginning. I think what I wanted to show you today was that it's a simple, fun little game that you will struggle with. And I think that you just need to launch the game knowing that it's going to be a little tough with the controls. Do not let that push you away from it. There's a great big map that you can, uh, you can roam around with your dirigible. You can build settlements, you can get other settlements, you can trade, you can fight, and that's only just the beginning. This is just a demo. I think that, like, it's beautiful. The graphics are great, and uh, the voice acting is a lot of fun. There's some really good voice acting down the line. The movement is just so different than anything you've done before, and once you kind of get down, it's just like any other system. Once you get it down, you will move through it. And you will find that uh, that you're get like you're getting it. I had like an aha moment, and that's when it was like, oh, okay. I've played this game quite a bit, uh, three or four times through the demo now, and um, each time I get a little bit wiser, a little smarter, and a little uh, quicker at the movement. Do I wish that? Do I wish I could like pull away from this and point and click? Yes, I think like that's on my list for sure. I wish when I was moving from one settlement to the other, like having to open the map, click on the settlement, travel there, close the map, come back out is kind of a pain in the butt. I wish that I could simply move from settlement to settlement, but you're, you're tethered. There's always a tether. So here's my takeaway of this game. Go right now, add it to your stream wish list. And if it's already out, you should buy it because it is a lot of fun. And you will get used to the controls. And you... There is no penalty for building and destroying, which how many games have you played where that is like this... this It's stopping you from being like building and being creative. The gameplay is solid and smooth and fun. Great voice acting. I can't wait to see where this game goes. Please, please, please add this to your wishlist now or go buy it and support an indie game developer. It's one developer. Go support them. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you next time. The video is over. Now it's time for you to do your part. Follow, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.